Alrighty, let's take a look at DWM. DWM is Suckless's Window Manager. It actually stands for Dynamic Window Manager. And if you've used Window Managers in the past, like i3, you're going to have to adapt a little bit to some new ideas because DWM is different than any other window manager, at least any other window manager that I've used. Um, if you're on Gentoo, you can install it through Emerge, but personally, I don't like to do this because DWM is already so minimal that there really isn't any benefit to setting use flags on it or doing any of that other Gentoo specific stuff. In fact, the only use flag that's even available to set on DWM is the Xenorama use flag, which I would keep enabled anyway because I use multiple monitors. So anytime I'm setting up DWM, downloading it, installing it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I just go directly to suckless.org, the Suckless Devs website, and I download it from there. And on their website, they also list some of the differences that I was alluding to earlier between DWM and some other window managers. So DWM, it doesn't have any Lua integration, no 9P support, no shell-based configuration. Uh, by default, there's not really a whole lot of different things it's supported for. It doesn't have a lot of features by default. And this is because it only has 2,000 single lines of code to it. So if you want anything extra besides the very minimal amount of features that DWM comes with, you have to patch all of that stuff in on your own. Um, and DWM is customized through editing its source code, which makes it extremely fast and secure. It doesn't process any input data, which isn't known at compile time. Now, DWM, this has a bit of an advantage and a disadvantage to it. Um, the advantage is if you are familiar with the C programming language, then DWM will probably be easier for you to configure than other window managers because you don't have to deal with Lua, SH, Ruby, or some type of weird custom configuration format. You're just gonna be doing it in C. And obviously, if you wanna run a very minimal system, then you don't have to have support for Ruby, you don't have to have support for Lua, uh, you just need support for C, which basically any OS is going to support. Um, but obviously, if you don't know C, if you've never you know, dipped your foot into the C pool and C syntax gives you the heebie-jeebies, then configuring DWM is probably gonna be a little bit difficult for you. And because DWM is customized through editing its source code, it's pointless to make any binary packages out of it. Um, that's why I think Gentoo is really the only OS where you're going to see that you can get DWM through its package manager, because obviously Emerge downloads source code and then compiles it locally on your machine. Um, I don't think DWM is available in Pac-Man or apt-get or anything else like that, which is a binary system. So this keeps the user base small and elitist. There are no novices asking stupid questions. And I really applaud the suckless devs for having this stance because so many things in this world in the tech industry as well as outside of it seem to get ruined when people make them more accessible to normies. So many other devs will sacrifice functionality, performance, efficiency, customizability, and just turn their software into a complete piece of crap. In my opinion, it's not worth it to lower the standards of something just so that stupider people or people that are not willing to do the work to understand a tool can use it. So the suckless devs get a thumbs up from me for that. So anyway, DWM does everything. Or at least for me, it does everything that I needed i3 to do while having a smaller code base, using less RAM, and just overall being more minimal than i3, which makes it a better tool. 
So in DWM, I can spawn multiple windows, I can resize them, I can go to other tags, which work similarly to workspaces, but they are slightly better. Um, one thing though about DWM, which took a little bit of getting used to for me when I was first using it, is the idea of a stack. So in DWM, you have a master stack on the left of your screen and a slave stack on the right. So let me actually spawn another window so this illustration makes a bit more sense. So your master stack is on the left, your slave stack is on the right. And so far this functions the same as i3, but then if I go ahead and I spawn another window, then you see it moves it into the slave stack and so on and so forth for all the rest of my windows. So the idea behind this is that your master window, which is the last window that you spawned, I should actually add some different things into this window so that we can keep them straight. So we'll do a Neo fetch on this one and we'll do like an H top on this one. And we'll do like a ls l on this one so the idea is that the most recent window that you spawned is going to be the most important one it's going to be the window that you're going to want to pay the most attention to and so as a result dwm is going to give it the most screen real estate and then your older windows are going to become slave windows and they're all gonna have to share this other half of the screen. Actually, I think this is slightly less than half because I don't, I don't remember if I changed it in my source code or not, but by default, DWM actually gives the slave, some, I mean, not the slave, it gives the master something like 55 or 60% of the screen, so just slightly more than half. Um, but yeah, all of the slaves, they just have to share this other half of the screen. So they're still visible, but they're not fully visible because they're going to be less important windows. Now, the slave windows, they don't all have to stay scrunched up over on the right hand side permanently. Uh, it is possible to increment a slave window over into the master window, say if you wanted to do a uh, checkerboard layout like this but for me this almost never becomes necessary in my personal use case i'm almost always just splitting my windows you know half and half like this or sometimes i'll have a third one over here um you know i could probably count the amount of times that i spawn four windows in a real use case in a tag on my fingers so anyway, enough of showing off DWM. Let me show you how to actually install it. So we get it from suckless.org. You have the download right here, and it is 24.7K. Again, it's such a minimal, um, such a minimal window manager compared to anything else, and obviously much more minimal than a desktop environment. So once you download it, you'll get this uh, tar.gz. Just go ahead and open that, and then you'll get this folder, DWM 6.2. And this actually contains all of the source code for DWM. So here you go, these uh, few files right here. This is all you need to get DWM up and running, at least to get a basic DWM up and running. So I have my um, actual config where I keep my window manager and SL status and all those type of things inside of a config folder. And it's actually under my root user right now. I'm not sure why I have it under my root user. I should probably change that. So I have it right here. Now this DWM that you see right here is my customized one, which is inside of this folder here. And it obviously has a lot more it's very different than this one that you get because this is more similar to how it's going to look with a basic uh, install which I'm gonna go ahead and do right now so if we go into this new one 
You don't have to delete the old one or anything like that. All you have to do is go into the folder for the DWM that you actually want to install. And then we're going to do make clean install. And it's done. It went ahead and compiled it. And this is the same thing that you have to do anytime you change the layout of DWM, anytime you change a key binding, is you have to recompile it. So that may be a little bit of a downside to DWM compared to other window managers because obviously it doesn't have a configuration file. You just edit the source code directly. But I mean, my CPU is decent. You saw how quickly it was able to compile. It's not a huge package. It's not like you're emerging Firefox. So compiling it is pretty quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut down X. And then I'm going to start X again. Actually, let me edit my Xenit RC because I don't want SL status to start because that's that's gonna give a slightly uh, misrepresented idea of how DWM looks because DWM doesn't contain SL status by default. That's a separate suckless program. So let's right quit and then we'll start X. So this is DWM in all of its minimal under 2000 single lines of code glory. And let me see if I can remember the default key binding. I think it's alt enter. It's not alt enter. Um, is it alt shift enter? Okay, alt shift enter is what spawns our terminal. And oh, this is also using ST now. That's interesting. So you may also have to install ST with, um, with DWM as well, or at the very least, you have to change uh, the terminal that it's using to be whichever terminal you have installed. So let's, um, let's first get a full screen going. And let me show you just very quickly how to do some configuration to DWM. So we'll go back to my config folder. All right, so most of your configuration for DWM is just gonna be done inside of this config.h. So inside of here is where you can set your fonts, um, you can set uh, the border that you want for windows, all of that good stuff there. You can set your color schemes in here. There's also a patch you can download called, uh, I think it's XRDB or maybe it's X resources. Actually, it's probably X resources, which basically lets you set your color scheme for DWM through X resources. And that's what I do because I have that set up so that I can set my Vim's color scheme through X resources, my bash color scheme, just everything is set through X resources in one easy place. Um, here is where you would change your terminal. So I should be able to change this to URXVT. Uh, let me actually be a smart boy and go to got to become root. I really need to change this to not be in my root directory. Um, not Kenny's config. We need to go to CD um, config um. All right, so this is my default. Um, well, not the default DWM, but my default DWM. So let me see what the correct way is to change this. Okay, so I literally just put your XVT in there. So this line here, you may have to change if you don't have ST. So you'll just have to change that to URXVT or um, whatever your actual um, whatever your actual terminal is on your computer. And then down here, uh, let me go back to this other one. I'm not used to the key bindings. Like the key bindings for my DWM and the default one are very similar, but the main difference is that I changed 
uh, what the mod key is. So you see how everything here basically says mod key plus uh, something else. So these are the keyboard shortcuts for it. But the mod key by default is alt. So like to go to, um, to go to the next uh, window, you would do like Alt K and J to change which window you're on. Very similar to how Vim is laid out. But you can see there's, there's a few things that I changed. So if we wanted to do something like, um, let's change our, our terminal. So let me see, that is at term CMD. All right, let's change this to URXVT. And let me see if I can figure out how to change the mod key again. Um, mod, oh, it's all caps. Mod key. Um, where does it actually let me set the mod key? Uh, all right, I'm not gonna change the mod key for this example, but you saw that I did change my terminal to URXVT. So I'm going to write that and then I'm going to make clean install for this DWM again. So that's a change that I made to the setup. And then if I want to apply that change, I have to kill DWM. And I guess it would be Alt Shift Q to do that, yep. And then if you start X again, and then I do Alt Shift Enter, you see that now I'm using URXVT instead of ST. So that's basics for how to change the look and feel of DWM. I'll probably do another video about how to actually patch DWM because that's a little bit more complicated than just changing the terminal it uses. And this video is already getting a little bit long. So anyway, leave a like on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and go ahead and share it with somebody who you would think would find it useful. Peace out.